Good morning, Meg Hogan here. How are you going? I just wanted to talk a little bit to the business owners today. What we're trying to do is just sort of have a look and see, are you really identifying your business well enough within your community? Are you uh, supporting their needs well enough? Could there be gaps in what you're providing versus what the customer actually wants? Is this something that actually you could profit on over time? What I'm suggesting to you is probably if we could just sort of fluff it up, gloss it up a little bit of what you actually do. Um, say you're a florist. If someone said, hi, what do you do? And you say, I'm a florist. Does that actually evoke enough interest? Does it evoke enough um, engagement that they want to actually inquire far more? Or does it just go, hey, I don't need a florist, therefore that's it's enough conversation, I'm out of here. And what I wanted to sort of say is how do we fluff that up in such a way that we can say things like, I'm in the feel good industry, I'm in for provoking wonderful colours, great smells, great atmosphere, um, creating beautiful moments, this is my industry. Now, with something like that, and it may not be that specific, you're probably finding that this particular person who they're talking to all of a sudden has curiosity questions, intrigue questions. They're not ready to walk away just yet because it's just so different. It's just so different, as in it's touching um, my beliefs, it's touching my feelings and emotions. This is not what normal people say. And therefore, you've just captured a little bit of uh, engagement with this person. And that's one of the number one reasons that we can actually then say, this is what I do. That's what I want. Would you like to take my card? Can I offer you a service? And that's just one of the biggest hard things to do when you're cold calling someone is to actually grab their attention. So when we say, what business are you really in? gloss it up, fluff it up, change it around so it's actually attacking their emotional side as well and adding benefits and so forth. Now the next thing we're going to say is where are the gaps in what we offer? This is quite an intriguing question because okay if you're a tree lopper, I'm sorry my background is a little bit of tree lopping, but if you're a tree lopper and you have a customer that says oh yes but I want the whole tree removed and you say no I can cut the tree to the base but I don't have any equipment to do the um, the stumps and the roots and that so do you mind if we just cut it off at ground level some people will jump at that because yes it's saving costs and it doesn't seem to bother them other people will go no I want the whole tree removed so if we're taking the whole tree out and I don't have the equipment my gap is that I need to one, either buy the equipment and teach my staff how to use it. Or two, maybe subcontract to someone else who does stump grinding under, that we can use under our banner and have them come in and do it and we just take a slice of profit off on the top of that. So you can see there that in that industry, in that specific example, there was a gap. And that gap could have actually made you more money over time with the vast amount of jobs that you do in one year. And that's what we're looking at today. One, what business are you really in? And two, um, where are the gaps that you could fulfill? All right, there's an exercise for you. Go for it. Go and have a look at your business and see what will actually um, transition and come out of this uh, when you brainstorm with your staff. Okay, have a great day. Bye.